got to feel in heaven when my lover's near. Lord, let this moment last for another year. Though today has ended, the night's still young, I'd say. Lover, don't go away. Let it be the thing that I am longing for. Let's fly out from Manhattan to the California shore Just to watch the ships at night on the San Francisco Bay Oh, lover, please, please stay Don't say you have to go Don't say you need to run Stop the clock on Central Station And we can have a drink downtown Let it be the night that I am longing for Let's fly down south to Austin or to Ecuador Just to drink pina colada on a hot wet summer's day Oh lover Divine Denny D. I am El Diablo. And today we are cooking the books. Woot, woot. And that's not because of a tax problem. No. No. That's a different that's show a different altogether. Of books that we still need to do. Uh, no, no. This is uh, this is our cooking the book series. We've done it once before. So it's I uh, now I guess now it's a now it's a series. Now before it was just a show. Now it's a series. Mm-hmm. And today we are co- grabbing the book. Yeah, I'm going to grab the book. I'm grabbing the book. Today oh. we are cooking the books. So what this means is we basically take uh, some fun cookbook we found out in the world and we find some recipes from it. We cook it for you guys to see how. And today I'm very, very, very excited because we are cooking the Necronom Nom Nom. Yes. Ne- do you know Recipes what? and rights from the lore of H.P. Lovecraft. Exactly. So this is a cookbook all based on Lovecraftian horror. Do you know what the Necronom nom, nom refers to? No. No. You don't know I, anything I know, about it? I know nom nom nom, as in like... But do you know what... So you, you've I, never heard, have you heard of the Necronomicon? Yes, I've heard of it. That is what it is. I've, I've heard of it's it. A, it's, a, it's, a, well, it's a tome that actually loosely exists in reality, but this is a, this is a reference to a Lovecraftian element. That's yes. been played. So today we are going to do the Necronom Nom Nom. So all of our cocktails are coming out of this book and our recipe, which I am very <laughs> excited to I'm see. I'm so nervous about this recipe, but I'm hoping it goes well and it'll be fun. Uh, so uh, <laughs> this book is insane. It, this book is insane. Well, let's get into a little bit more about that later. Let's explain. For those of you who have never been here before, um, we are based in the beautiful La Belle, Quebec, Canada. We oui. uh, in the land before the COVID times kerfuffle. Is that the, the COVID, COVID kerfuffle. Is that, can we call it that? That makes it sound so. It sounds cute. adorable. Yeah, I don't like it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> just a bit of a kerfuffle. The COVID kerfuffle. No big update. <laughs> um, so, in the time before the COVID kerfuffle, we were live performers in front of. Live, live people, people in the live world. So uh, we were ba- we were based in the burlesque world. Yes, that's right. I was a producer, a comedian, a host, a, 
uh, uh, General Man About Town? Uh, 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 man of Mystery? Man About Town. <laughs> man About Town. And you? I was a uh, burlesque dancer, choreographer, host, uh, producer, etc., etc. And then? And uh, then the Grand Panini hit. And we? Dis- made paninis. We made paninis. <laughs> we decided to take our other love, which is eating and drinking. <laughs> And, and talking to people. And talking to people. And so bring new people in, make some fun recipes together, chat about it on the internets. Hi, internet. And have a lot of fun. And today's going to be a really, really fun show. Especially because I legit know nothing about Lovecraft. I've started to educate myself slightly. Before well, start, show, and what did you but... do to start to educate yourself? <laughs> you, re- you watched how many movies? I watched one movie. One movie. But and again, I will say of all of the movies you could have watched, it's probably one of the most upsetting, disturbing versions of Lovecraftian horror. I think it was the most disturbing movie I've ever watched in my really? life. Really? Ever? Yep. Yep. I don't, know if, I don't know if that's true for me. I was, I mean, as a kid, I was heavily disturbed by Return to Oz, but like not since Return to Oz have I been so disturbed by. Movie. Yeah. Yeah. It was the movie was of course. Mm-hmm. Color of space. Color. Color, the color of the, the space. Color of, of, of space. It wasn't the, the color of the no. space. Color of space. Color of space. Color sure. of space. I, guess, I think I don't know if that's right. I it's think four words. The color of space. No. I'm going to find out, but it's not right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Anybody uh, who's got an internet in front of them, you, you double check. A, what jo- it, and again, it, and it's a, a, a Nicolas Cage being possibly his Nicolas Cageiest. But also just, 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 ugh. Upsetting. Upsetting. Disturbing. Yeah. Really well told, though. Very excellent story. I've always loved Lovecraftian horror to me. It's probably, I think it was the first time I really felt like I'd found something that was kind of my own, you know? Like, it was mm. like, a, it was so weird. It was so disturbing. There's not a lot of people I ever met who were really into it, especially when I was getting into it, it was long before an internet or ease of finding community really existed. Because you old. Yeah. So we did. I, I started. I just started loving these books and and and, and stories that were. Ugh, it's it's very disturbing stuff. It's very upsetting, but it's also I, wonderful. When did we watch that movie? Was Saturday we started Saturday. or Sunday? Yeah. I'm Color still- out of space. That's what it is. The color out of space. All right. Sure. Uh, either way, I never have to see it again. It's excellent. And I haven't let it go yet. Like, it's still like there's images that have, have scarred my brain. So if you like movies that scar your brain. It's, it's a good one. It, no, it won't scar you, but it's... It fucked me up, man. It's a, it's a good film. I really liked it. If you haven't seen it, Color Out of Space. It's really... It's very upsetting. It's very disturbing. But if you've read the, the story, it's, it's a fascinating movie. And again, so it's an old story. Lovecraft wrote it. So it's quite old, and, but they managed to capture what the story was about without really breaking the fact that they weren't in the right time period hmm. quite well, I thought. Yes. Sure. Excellent. So we're going to do that today, plus we have a sexy woman. Cool. Sexy woman. Hmm. We have some amazing music. Amazing. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun today, and, 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 and perhaps my favorite game I've ever made for us. Excellent. My favorite game. It's going to be very weird. And I think if you thought Color Out of Space was disturbing, <laughs> this game may oh, be worse. Oh, we're going to play disturbing games. Yes. Yay. And yes, thank you. Uh, and now let's just check in with the people here. Hi, people. Let's, let's say see hi the people to the here. People. And I also, let me just see if I can get this working here. We have, um, there it is. There we are. We have some people up here. Um, Look, well, uh, Misty said, I have a nice shirt. Oh, look, you can pull it up on I the screen now. I can pull these now. up on here Fancy. now. So I figured some a few things out. So we've got a few things. Uh, uh, it's, it's really meant to work with uh, uh, YouTube, but it's 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 going to, I'm going to have access to everybody through here. So Misty said that I have a nice shirt. This, of course, is my... Uh, Obey Cthulhu. Obey, Obey Cthulhu. Obey Cthulhu. And I like the fact that instead of just the registered trademark, it's our way Sure. Which is where Cthulhu lives. That's his hometown. He doesn't live like in your heart. Yeah. Um, um, my mom said hi. Hi, mom. It's kind of nice. Indeed. And uh, Blothy, you said sexy macho. Groovy. Everybody's having you're having a little trouble with YouTube. Let me just uh, quickly check out the YouTube over here because it was I checked it out earlier and it seemed to be fine. It says we're live, but we're not. Uh... Let's see what's going on here. 
Just I don't know. Double checking it for everybody. But it seems we're wearing our sexy lap coats Check today. Earlier, it seemed oh. to be fine. Oh. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, that's for live, but we're not. Oh look, we're talking to ourselves. Yeah. That was weird. Ooh, that was strange. so Cthulhu. Oh my god. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, it seems to be working. So if you're having we're having problems with the. Uh, uh, YouTube, then that was fine. Oh, uh, hi, Ruby Rose. Oh, turn. Uh, hello, turn 5849. Good to see you. How are you? Hello. Ruby Rose Welcome is back. here. Sinfinity. It's good to see you. I came in. Oops. I came to try and uh, lurk on your guys' stuff the other day. Thank you very much again to come and, Welcome, come and see us. Welcome back to HP Lovecraft, yes. the cooking show. HP <laughs> Lovecraft, the cooking show. That's fantastic. Everybody's here. Let's all go back to the main camera. Hello. Yes. So, as, so for people who just arrived today, we are cooking the books. We are cooking recipes from eight from what well, is actually by Mike Slater. Uh, it's the Necronom Nom Nom recipes inspired by H.P. Lovecraft. So it's going to be fun. That's why I have the, the we have the love coats on. The love coats. The love coat. Well, that's the love, love coats. coats. Um. Exciting. <laughs> so, no, but uh, this is uh, my homage to the Reanimator. Sure. And I just did it because he was doing it. <laughs> my favorite thing. I like you don't know what you're making and it's fantastic. Well, I mean, I know what I'm making, but it's, it's tonight's recipe is kind of a take on an eggplant Parmesan, but because it's, it's an upsetting eggplant Parmesan. Um, yeah, because it's Lovecraft, it's, it involves some like carving of my eggplant and like making some science happen. Maybe I, I don't really know. Like I bought two eggplants cause that's how confident I am on my ability to do this properly, but who knows? It'll be fun. Well, have fun. Term says we don't have oddballs demanding erotica from us this week. Which Yet. Is fun, because we always supply erotica, whether they ask for it or not. My problem is sometimes they just ask for it at the wrong time. <laughs> but, it, I mean, it's we're 12 minutes in. So. It's anybody's game. Exactly. Right? This, could, this could all be erotica from here on in. <laughs> I think we should do a whole episode where we just read uh, Harlequin Romances. And okay, that's all we do. That's all we do. Yeah, we we'll do it on Twitch. While you cook like an enormous pot of macaroni and cheese. I don't really understand, but sure. I think it's a good I idea. I could do that. I think that's how the internet should work. Uh, shall we have a cocktail? Harlequin romance novels and mac and cheese. I don't see why not. Uh, I, shall we? Yeah, yes, we shall. Let's out. drink some cocktails. All right. The it's Veronica so this week, uh, as I said, <laughs> these are all coming out of this lovely book. Not not every book we've ever found has a, a cocktail section, but this one does. They're all kind of fun, weird cocktails. If you really want these to work well, I would really recommend investing in some dry ice. We did not have time to find any dry ice, so we're going to make... Where in the middle of where we live are we going to find dry maybe ice? Maybe there's a dry lake that froze. Oh, maybe. Sorry. Duh. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but these are some fun things. The one we are going to make today, which is actually fun because it actually started popping up on, I was noticing on, uh, I think my Instagram, that just started, somebody made these for a, a, a bar in Toronto, which is a chain of bars across Canada called Storm Crow, uh, which is a, if you've never been, uh, it's a great bar in Canada. There's one in Vancouver where it started. There's one in Toronto now. And it's a it's a gaming bar, so you can go and play board games. But all of them are very decked out. Summer the the one in Vancouver is very uh, uh, Lord of the Rings, so it looks like going into an old tavern, but it still has uh, like Doctor Who TV style sort of uh, steampunk TV screens. There, it's a great bar. Uh, they started posting that they make this now. Uh, we're gonna do our version of it. Which is, if you I'm going to pull it up. Will the cocktails have bacon? No, but tonight no the bacon cocktails tonight. will have Oh, you got to yeah. make sure you're selected in there. There you go. What with the, 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 the this yeah. one first? Hit it. There you go. Giddy up. This is the gin and miskatonic. Uh, of course, reference to miskatonic university. Sure. Uh, and a lovely plan gin and tonic. So in this, we're going to basically have uh, three, uh, four simple ingredients. Of course, with any gin and tonic, we need a good gin. Uh, I recommend for a proper, simple, and with this is what you want, a base gin and tonic, uh, a proper London dry gin. We are using a Bombay Sapphire this week. 
Hola, Margarita. Uh, hello, Margarita. Um, oh, sorry, that. Now, our, our tonic water we're using, this is this lovely Evertree Elderflower. Fever is it Fever Tree? Fever. Oh, Fever Tree. And it's an Elderflower tonic water. So it's going to add a little herbaceous note to it. You're going to want to have some limes. And finally, the, the kicker to this, which actually took me a couple hundred kilometers out of my way to go <laughs> find it, is a bottle of Hypnotic, which is a vodka fruit liqueur, it's a fr French vodka fruit liqueur with um, cognac in it. So it's a cognac and vodka fruit liqueur. Uh, but in a spectacular blue color, one of the things I've noticed with all of these recipes for the, the cocktails, it's sort of playing on the, the potion-y aspects of it all. So... Do we need ice for these? We will get... Yes, we will need some ice, but in a minute. But yeah, you should get it for us right now. It's not going to hurt you. So the first thing that we're going to want to do to get this working is we are just going to quarter lengthwise some limes. Uh, so for this drink, it says you need... Uh, three lime segments. Now you need three to go in, three for the juice in the drink, and three for decoration. You can use the same three if you want, but we're gonna be, since we, we have a, we're, we're lousy with limes. Lousy with limes, I tell you. We're gonna just now, go the full route. I think at some stage we need to, at least maybe with the overhead cam, show the inside um, of. of this book. Oh, because yeah. Because it's, uh, I'll let you make your cocktail and then I want to talk about this book yeah, a little bit. Yeah, we will. Uh, and then again, maybe that's, if you can, I'm going to have you read. Wait, they. Now, this is all of, this, this book is kind of fascinating, especially if you like Cthulhu at all. This book has got actually two sections. It's got the first section you come across with all the recipes with the pictures and stuff. And then at the back, it's got all the recipes again in English. In English. <laughs> and here, if you read the read the the first in, first instructions uh, for me, so that I can make sure I'm making the drink correctly. All right. In order to properly make this drink, having selected a highball glass able to accommodate oh, the dose, while you do that, fill with ice and add the measure of Dr. Hendrick's fortifier. So, um, in the actual recipe, it calls for Hendrix gin. So, I guess that is the reference to Dr. Hendrix fortifier. Yes. So, so Hendrix gin. Hendrix gin. Um, uh, in our case, we're, we're, we're going. Using Bombay. But yes, I'm going the gin of a, a more obscure doctor from the realms of India. Yes. Um, so, we're going to put in three ounces. Fill with ice, it does say. It does okay, say if you all. Oh, instructions right, that I just read. It. Sorry, I will fill the ice according to the tone. I mean, I didn't want to be a bitch about it, but well, you, you, you it's asked, a little late you for that me to now. Read the instructions, so <laughs> just save it. All right, so three ounces of gin. It's a strong drink, man. All right. Next ingredient is squeeze in fresh lime from three wedges. The number is important. Admittedly, we don't know why. It's a fair. It's a fair statement. So we're just going to go whoop. the juice of three lime wedges. Three wedges. There we are. And we'll just go with these. Uh, come back here, you son of a gun. I oh, that went in so well, and then I messed it up. Go That's there. what she said. <laughs> there we go. Squishy, squishy. There we go. Three limes. It's funny, I always find the, the three line method for a gin and tonic mm -hmm. is an old, old statement, it's from, it's an old bar statement that for some reason it's always three limes. That will make a perfect gin and tonic uh, a citrus amount, and nobody has ever known where that came from. Hmm. Well, then it says to add the, the tonic generously, yes. stir to combine. Yes, so we're going to add our tonic. Bitching is necessary in in most worlds. Just saying. it's my favorite new pastime. It's all I do these days. Just bitch, 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 bitch. There we go. And I'm lovely. I promise. Combine that. A stirring, stirring dance. You can't really see my stirring dance when I'm wearing my my lab coat. All right, and the last thing. Well, not the last thing. The last ingredient we're gonna do, please. Hold on. 
Pour the hypnotic liqueur over the back of a spoon to layer on top and make the subject amenable to the rest of the elixir. All right. So, meaning we are going to take this and over the back of our bar spoon, we're going to take how much? Oh, sorry, it's an ounce. It is one ounce. Yes, so we're going to put in one ounce over the back of our bar spoon. Oh, that didn't layer very well. Let me do that again. That's good that you're making two cocktails. Yes, it is. Did you want to layer it over? Also not as dark as Curacao. No, it isn't. As... It's got a kind of ombre scenario going there on. There we go. That's, yeah. I don't know. If oh, there it is. It's, there it's yeah. layered down the bottom. There's what yeah. we want. It is heavier. That's why it feels weird to layer it that way because it is heavier. So that's going to go down to the bottom. And, then, and lastly, there we go. I'm just going to uh, you do that. Well, it's we're done. I was just going to put it aside oh, for okay. a moment so it does not get. And now to put in On the demand. garnish, which is a triskelion. What is a triskelion? Of limes. It's three limes essentially. <laughs> this is there. We are. Boop boop boop. Oh, do you want to go grab some boop boops? Uh, the straws. Yep. That's a funny comment. <laughs> what's, what's what's the what? I said, that's a funny comment. All right. Boom, and boom, and boom. And if we just check that from the overhead so you guys can sort of see what we get, get here. Let me get this out of the Look way. Look at that. There's a drink. Look at those. There are our... Fancy pants. And if I can have that, there yeah. we are. And we're going to take our spoon down the side, and down the side. And that is our gin and Miss Katana. You'll never believe who's here. Who's here? Joanny Darvo. Joanny Darvo, it's so nice to see here from you, to see you. Well, not to see you, but to know that you are being seen by other people. I'm going oh. to now drink this I'm going to sip beverage. this as well because this looks pretty intense. Uh, joyeux uh, anniversaire un peu en retard. Oh, that's really nice. Would never have thought mm. of putting that in there, but that actually really does make it quite nice. That's a lovely beverage. That is really nice. The, the limes uh, garnished this way do make it a little awkward to drink. Big. But it's not, but it isn't bad at all. I like that. Quite I like bad. the flavor of that. Yeah, the flavor is delicious. Here, I'm just going to get this and clean oh, yes. this up for you. Please and thank you. Um, oh, for sorry. Cook, for cooking purposes. Oh, well, I'll get another clean one of those. <laughs> oh, well, sorry. Well, no I thought that's why you'd put it there. Um, and it's, again, simple drink. Again, if you don't want to go all the way to get this, uh, hypnotic. Uh, you don't have to. I think uh, Curacao would also do it quite well. This, once upon a time, this was widely available everywhere, hypnotic. Mm -hmm. So, I, and especially in the States. If you happen to be watching from the States, this was like big time available. I don't yeah. know why we had such a hard time getting it. Maybe pandemic. Pandemic. It's, and, it's, but it's, and this elderflower, I like the elderflower is really quite, mm -hmm. there's a little bit of, mm, just a hint of that in there. It's mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, it's not too sweet, but it's still. Tastes lovely. Gin is catonic. Yes. It's excellent. Yum, yum, yum. Let me just put In my this tongue, 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 tongue. I'm just going to put this other tonic. You um, go put that other to see that. That's what we have over here. We have the color out of space. Here, we have that. <laughs> color out of space is over here. Yes, it just tried to make you merge with it. Yeah. What a fucked up movie. It was a great movie. Oh, Shana Tova to you and oh. all of yours. Hi, Audrey. Oh, so, many, so many people here. I Thanks know. Guys. Lovely. Thanks what for tuning in, friends. You guys came for a good show. It's like a whole freaking party up in here. Look, we did, this, I think this is kind of interesting. You know, if you look uh, right down on that, you uh, little stranger things. <laughs> like the demigorgon? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit. Which is, again, the, 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 the design for the demigorgon is very clearly influenced by some of the stuff. Which we will see later on. Oh, what are we doing? Right on. Shall we ask a question? Sure, let's ask them a question. Let's ask people a question. Once let's... a week, we like to do this. We like to get you all involved. Yeah, exactly. We want to, and again, we don't, you can comment whenever you want throughout the show, and we will try and make sure we catch as many of them as possible. But at least once per, at least twice per show, we want to <laughs> make sure we have questions and we get your guys' input on. The first question for this week is. 
Uh, okay, for me, Cthulhu and Lovecraftian tales were the first horror stories to ever scare me. What were the first horror movies or books to scare you? And I also want to preface this with not just the first thing to scare me. The first thing to ever scare me... Wasn't horror. Wasn't. It was all, like any child, it was probably Disney. I was going to say Bambi or... Or Santa Claus. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, for me, the first thing I ever remember being terrified of was uh, the alligator and Peter Pan. Couldn't cope with that thing. Um, but, and again, I'd say Lovecraft is one of the first horror things to ever really scare me. I think in conjunction with that, probably uh, um, I'd put Sherlock Holmes in there. Mm. Um, and I would put Dracula. So, like, again, the first things to scare me, much like you, weren't horror things. Like, well, the, well, this is about the Michael Jackson thriller video scared the bejesus out of me because I was like, what year did that come out? 81? 81? 82? 81? I was like three or four, and I like I begged my dad because you could rent it on VHS. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I begged him, and then he got so well, not upset with me, but like I was too afraid to watch it. And I remember him saying in the store, "It's gonna scare you." I was like, "No, I want to see it." And no, it scared the shit out of me. Um, <laughs> and then like I wasn't really such um, a horror. Like person. I read like growing up, like any teenage girl, like I read a lot of the like R.L. Stein and like Fear Street shit, but that wasn't like, it was like creepy. Did you see Fear, did you know the story of Fear Street before you watched it? Yeah, well, I read all the Fear Street books oh, growing I didn't know up. That. Um, but I mean, that was a massive series the same way like Hardy Boys was a massive series. Yeah. Like there was a lot of Fear Street stuff. It became like a, its own thingy, but like, I don't, cause I didn't, I never want, like I didn't like being scared. So, no. like, I was never really into horror. I remember watching, um, like, Hitchcock with my dad, and that scared me. Mm -hmm. I remember V. V's more sci-fi, though, right? The lizard people than it is horror. Or is that kind of Lovecraftian? Yeah. Like, I don't know. No, no, V. V's, I mean, I would say V is sci-fi, but it it has, you know, it definitely has a, a horror element to it. Yeah. And, again, to me, sci-fi is not really a genre. Horror is a genre. Sci-fi is to me more of a setting. So Stephen King, I think Stephen King would have been because I read a lot of like I just looked. I, I I'm copying Ruby Rose a little bit because she said Carrie, and I'm like, wait, I read a lot of Stephen King growing up, and yeah, that was probably the first thing. Uh, so you now, after everything you said, you just went no Stephen King. Because I never watched horror movies, but I'm just thinking about like liar. And you I read a lot I'm of horror books. I'm also books, not like, talking about the fact it doesn't have to be a kid. Hmm. You could be like the first time you really got into horror could have been at 20 years old. That you went, oh crap, that scared. No, me. I think Stephen King. Like I, I maybe I didn't. It Which was the book that scared you of Stephen King the most? Oh, it scared me. Yeah, it really? scared me. Cool. Yeah. Me. Yeah. And again, I was probably twelve or thirteen when mm -hmm. I read it. Maybe so. Like, I think it was Stephen. Misery King. scared me. <laughs> I, the stand scared me. Mm. Needful things had its moments. I never finished reading Needful Things. Um. Cujo scared me. Cujo's a good scary book. Yeah, but I think the most disturbed I legitimately have ever been watching a film was what? this past weekend, <laughs> watching Color of Space. Color, color Out of Space. I, somebody just check who's right, because I need to know. I will, I will put money on it. 20 bucks. 20 bucks? All right, All right. let's, let's check what everybody has to say here. Come let's on, people. Hi, people. Get my Hi. thing going on here. So let's see. We got... Oh, look, uh, I put on my, like, my closest I could to Cthulhu <laughs> earrings. They have danglies. Misty said, anything Stephen King. The first time I read a Stephen King book, I couldn't sleep for days, and some of those things still haunt me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my mom, <laughs> my mom had to point out. Yes. <laughs> Dinosaurs of Matinee Sundays. Yes, there was, there was a period. I do remember that. And again, I don't know if the dinosaur movies I'd call horror, but I guess some of them were Godzilla, so it does fit. But yeah, the, watching the, the dinosaur movies when I was really young and trying to hide from them while still watch them was a very difficult thing to do. Oh, the same way I tried to hide from the movie on Sunday yeah. and still watch it? Yeah. Uh, the Michael Jackson thriller, Head in the Closet, <laughs> after watching it. That's fantastic. Ruby Rose said Carrie. Hi, Ruby Rose. Um, any reality uh, terms of her, any reality show scare the shit out of me. Keeps me up and people like to watch it. I am so on board with that. Joanne e. Darvo said The Exorcist. Those are all astonishing answers. I Indeed. love all of those. Those are so good. 
And then, has, have, you've never read anything Cthulhu. You've never read The Mountains of Madness or no. Call of Cthulhu. No, keep talking at me. I'm just going to grab some. Um, like no, I've never read them. Has anybody else? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to. Oh, I hit the wrong button. I'm always talking. Over there. Um, has anybody else read any uh, 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 Lovecraft? Um, there's some great stuff. If you want, and I find what I loved about that was that it scared me when I was younger, but it was one of those things that I found that as you got, Misty Portugal said the film is called Color Out of Space. Oh, you win. 20 bucks. There right, you go. Um, I'll just take it off the bill. <laughs> <laughs> um, I win. Minus 20 bucks. <laughs> um, it's, it's, uh, there, there's so many great stories. I will say at the Mountains of Madness is probably my favorite. Mm. What I find is that there's so much... It's, it's also one of those things, when I started to hunt around for things for the show this week, there's so much music that is inspired by Cthulhu and Cthulhu and horror. Hmm. I mean, a lot of speed and, and black and heavy metal that comes oh, I thought out. It was like speed the movie? No, I wasn't. No, no. Speed, <laughs> a lot of speed metal. Uh, but, but there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of comedy mm -hmm. music. There's some really lovely sort of almost lyrical Irishy folk music that's sort of inspired by these sort of. It's it's really fascinating. If you ever want to spend a day going in a weird weird rabbit hole, go look up Cthulhu music on YouTube and just spend the day. Yeah, I don't see myself doing that, but you can. Okay. You can. Cool. All right. All right. What's going on? I, I would like, if if you will, oh, because hold on, one, one, one moment, please, because you are more familiar with um, the the lore. I am. And so I'll, t I'll tell you this, friends, um, because the front half of this book is written in Lovecraftian uh, vernacular and the back half is written in English, um, thank God, because had you I had no to... Idea. Had I had to have done like done this without, I mean, I might have figured it out. I guess maybe. There you go. Um, so the first of all, I'm just gonna bring your recipe up here. This but, is called the fate of the, the elder things. The fate of the elder things. So the elder things are mm -hmm. uh, not the oldest gods, mm -hmm. but they're the second branch that came here. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing you have to understand. Mm -hmm. These are very old. Mm -hmm. So. so, what I would like is if you could just read the first instruction as I chop uh, All right. about an inch or so from the top of my eggplant. I'm just going to take the top part off of this. Guy. So, the right or the, the directions here the first one is form a pseudopod into a clean, into a keen blade. Rise up against your former masters and separate your victim from its top one to two inches. Now, wielding your blade limb, slice vertically between the hideous rigid skin. Using other, using other limbs, spin the carcass to separate all the internals from the shell. Small horizontal cuts may be needed at the bottom to free the succulent innards. Do not. Sever the bottom completely. So what the fuck does that mean, right? So I cut <laughs> off the top one and a half inches of the eggplant. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in here and I'm going to leave a tiny bit. But what I'm trying to do is we're trying to basically take the inside of the eggplant out of the skin while leaving some form of cylindrical outer shell intact. You know I how much like I was always in here and how you're cutting and they've got quite a bit of space there just to keep it rigid, right? There you Well there you go. Let me go. I'm gonna show okay, so everybody. What I would over like here. is actually the paring knife. Yes, basically. the paring knife or do you yes. want the this knife? Oh I could have that knife. But I okay. So we've gone around the top here. We're not piercing the skin. I'm gonna slide this guy down as much as possible. We want to keep, again, we're trying to keep the skin intact. This is why I bought two eggplants, because I wasn't necessarily uber confident in my first go around at this. And unfortunately, 
We've never had a Lovecraft dinner party where I have tried to make this before. So that's that. The term is just referred to that you have a keen, uh, a skill handling of the eggplant. Oh, I thank you. <laughs> Yes, and yes, it, yes, but yes. it was funny because apparently um, my my stirring dance from last week would have gone down well. I think my eggplant handling also would have been you know, uh, inspirational. Uh, um, in the bottom of this, about an inch from the bottom or so, I'm going to put a little horizontal chop there. I'm going to put a little horizontal chop there. Maybe a little horizontal chop there because what I want to do is I want to get this meat, quote unquote, the, the eggplant meat. The eggplant meat? Yeah, I want to get the eggplant meat out of the eggplant. Like the Muffin Man? Yes, totally like the Muffin Man. I don't really know <laughs> what one had to do with the other. So <laughs> what I'm trying to do is basically like if, if this was an apple. I would say I'm trying to core this. No. Yeah. You know what? I got all excited about jewelry tonight, but no. So, no. Can I hear? I've got an idea. Do you have an idea? I have a really good idea. Is it a really good idea? Oh. Uh, it was until I realized I couldn't find what I'm looking for. It's what? skewers, right? We do have skewers. They're probably worth all my baking weirdness. So what I'm trying to do is just loosen some of this up here and get it out of the eggplant because we're going to fry this up. This is going to make up most of our, our meal if I can figure out how in God's name these pieces are supposed to come out. Thank you for bearing with me. Stay tuned. Every once in a while people say it's great when I have a meltdown when I can't get the shit to work. So, you know, who knows? I know, but the problem is because it's not, it's, um, these guys and those guys aren't connecting. Oh, you well, know you what know I mean? how you to do that? Mm -hmm. can, I'm sorry, I don't know. Yes, I, please. If you went, you just scored a little bit. You got to go into there. So it yes, separates. but I also can't, we cannot cut off the bottom. No. But that's what oh, I'm saying. That's, if you go that yeah, way. Yeah, but we can't cut through the eggplant. So. Oh, well, I know. I'm not cutting through the eggplant. Look at us in our lab coats doing science. So it's not quite cut all the way through, I don't think. Because again, it was curving, so I didn't want to chop right through the, but if you want to. This is fun. Oh, this oh, one. Oh, okay, got a little bit now. out, got a little bit out. Now, here we go, this will be easier now. Yeah. But I, I got this. Okay, because I he's think. not cut, because he's Who, there. Who's right? not cut? That this guy, guy here? here? I'm trying to get the ones that are cut, like on the lines. Like this guy might come right out. Like that one will come right out. You think? Yeah. Who's oh, you're so smart tonight. Not that you're not always smart, hubby, but like tonight you were exceptionally on point. Look at that. So. We're gutting this guy. We're gut Use a spoon and scoop it. But Mo, I can't because this we're trying to we're, keep we're it trying to keep it in sort of like a certain shape. A certain shape so that I can cut use these portions that are coming out of here for the next part of this wild ride that we're on. This is a this is this is a crazy uh, uh, thing. The only reason I'm not 100 percent sure this is going to work. You know what? I, but love, I, I have faith in I you. I would love a spoon, though. That oh, is, I'll that is a spoon. Fair. Your mother had a, uh, had good ideas, but there you go. Let me see what happens here. Now, oh, fuck out <laughs> Stop getting mad at the eggplant or the cocktail. I it wasn't, did nothing it? wrong. It was just beautiful and fabulous and a slightly blue. It's true. And a very strong, by the way. I well, it, it is four ounces, ounces of, of booze, booze in it. In it's one a drink. very hefty drink. I find this one when, when I make drinks out of American cookbooks. Yeah, they're, they're much heavy. Stronger, much, much stronger. Generally, I try to make, when I make cocktails, I do about a three ounce cocktail. Well, is one ounce um, going to make that much of a difference? Yes. That's my question. It is. 
It's the equivalent of having a cocktail in a shot. Will having a cocktail in a shot every time make a big difference? As opposed to just the cocktail? Well, yes. There you go. That's fair. All right. <clears throat> All right. I think you've got something. The cocktail is your friend. Especially this cocktail. I've called it Dave. <laughs> All right. So, you know what? Here's a funny thing. Because, <laughs> <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Um... So I'm yeah. <laughs> chilling. No, um, what am I? Five. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. So I don't want to give away what we're doing yet because, like, I like to keep y'all in a little bit of suspense. Um, but what I'm going to do because so much of what just came out of here is um, CD guts, right? Um, CD's guts? CD's, CD's guts? These came out of my eggplant. <laughs> um, they'd be great if I was trying to plant another eggplant, but I don't think as far as like pieces to serve me, Dan, mm -hmm. anybody um, go, they're super awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat. Hold on. I'm, just, I'm helping you. Oh, thank you. I'm getting more of the seedy guts. Up. Um, see those guts? See those guts? <laughs> I call them Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so what we're going to do, because I did buy a second eggplant, ha ha ha, I get some guts from the is eggplant? I'm going to chop up some guts, some pieces mm. and just, we're going to use this cause that's, this is pretty seedy. Ha ha ha. I'll, um, I'll, get, I'll work on de-seeding it. Um, unseeding it. If it was a throne, it? would you de-seed or unseed it? Oh, I would un unseat the throne, but de-seed the eggplant. Ah. Um, but yes. That's where you and I differ. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your help. Oh, honey bun. Uh, um, all right, so here's what we're going to do, because I know what we're doing with this eventually. Eventually. Hold on. I think. You, I'm sorry. I, I won't put them there anymore. I'll go back here. No, no, you're fine. I wasn't. I was just moving it over. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top off this. I'm going to take the bottom off this. Boop. I'm going to cut your... And I'm going to... You're going to need to want to stand that up, though, too, aren't you? you need a little bit no, off but it. you can't take the one off. No, but so. I'm saying if you took the very bottom off, so it would sit flat. Ta-da! Who the best? We the best. Um, so I'm just going to cube this. You want to just grab this guy and take him away? This guy here? No, this guy this here. This guy. Don't mind. Yep. Come with me, Charlie. Don't need that guy. That's Gary. He's That's not Gary. my friend. He's, He's not your friend. He's no, not... he knows why. He knows what he did. He knows what he did. All right, so we're just going to put that dude over okay, okay. It's right in the forefront. It's beautiful. So it's, yeah. it creates a what's going to happen with that eggplant. It's looked like, and it's looked like we're asking people to show us their penises in the yes. corner. <laughs> <laughs> if you just turn on Twitch. <laughs> this is not an invitation. Um, all right, so what I'm doing here very quickly. Should I bring up the No, overhead? can you do me one quick yeah. other favor? Mm -hmm. Could you grab? Oh, I think we're out of paper towel. Oh. And I need some of those. Oh, sure. Thanks. And a plate on your way back to me. Thanks. All right, friends. Hey, I think we're alone now. Um, I'm going to cube this now again I make my own eggplant parm it does not look anything like this we selected this recipe for the ridiculousness oh, it's of the of the presentation um, weird we cannot make guarantees that it's gonna be awesome or that it's gonna work I think it's gonna be fantastic but I think if it does work, it's going to be freaking epic. Well, let's put it this so, way. It's eggplant, it's sauce, and cheese. I it is. So, like, no, from a taste perspective, I'm sure it'll be fine. But, like, um, yeah, man, you know? All right, so. Thanks again. See you later. Uh, see you later, Term. Well, thank you for joining. Uh, that was nice. To, Come on back. Thanks. Come on back. Nice awesome. to see you. And thanks for coming back. You know, again. Yeah. Fantastic. So. Sorry, I'm going to ask you for one more plate mm -hmm. with uh, some paper towel on it. Yes. So I'm doing this very rustique styles. Like I didn't cut these cubes even. I would have failed an exam at culinary school styles, but like it doesn't matter. Because um, we're just having fun with this tonight. We're just going to see how this all turns out.
It could so, be very silly. Eggplant is one of those things, kind of like mushrooms. I don't want eggplant to go in there. It's not going in there. Oh! Haha. -ha. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's going outside of there. Oh, I didn't know that. The other thing goes in there. Oh, I didn't uh, ah. See, I, I didn't understand what was happening. Uh -huh. I feel so excited about it. Clearly. Um, eggplant's one of those things, like zucchini, uh, like mushroom, from a vegetable perspective. It will release a ton of water, first of all, which um, when you're cooking isn't always awesome. Yeah. Like if you're making an eggplant parm, a traditional one or whatever, you wanna super salt this, okay? And like, don't be afraid and like, don't be all, I have heart disease, I'll be able, yeah, I get it, I get it. <laughs> but like, you're just pulling- Are you mocking heart disease? No, not at all. But like, I am, cause I grew up with so many people with heart disease, like in my family. Including. This is, this is, including my husband. This is not going to, um, we're doing this to pull the liquid out. Liquid out. So it's it's like when you heavily salt your water when you're boiling vegetables. It's or not, your meat. Or your meat. It's not all going into you. You're not consuming all of it. We're using this to draw out some of the liquid so that when you cook it, it doesn't release all of that liquid into whatever you're cooking it in or with. Can I have one more? Um, Papier toilet. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Papier to papier wait, wait. toilet. I don't want papier toilet. I want uh, I get, okay, well, you know, kitchen towel. Papier um, de cuisine. Uh, an S32. An S S32. I think it's a band from the nineties. S32. It's uh, a boy band. I dry England. everything. Okay, so we're gonna do this. <laughs> This is uh, heavily salted now. We're just gonna let this sit for 10 minutes. You're gonna be amazed at how much liquid comes out of this. We're just gonna let it chill. Do that with uh, your, with your, with, always with your eggplant. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Now, one last step I'm to this. Get this out of here. According to this lovely book. Oh yeah? I'm going to the English portion. Well, do you want me to read what it is? Maybe that'll try instruct it to a spirit for you. Okay, but now I do need the paring knife. Okay. Yes, you do need the paring knife. Yes. So, uh, <clears throat> using other limbs, spin a car. Okay, so you got that. Small horizontal cuts do not. Um, widen your blade and gleefully make four vertical cloth cuts, roughly one quarter inch wide through the sides of the vessel you have formed, starting at a half inch below the neck to within one inch of the bottom. So, <laughs> basically what it's asking me to do. So you're doing that every... I'm gonna do four of them. So you're making them a quarter inch wide. So... So you take a little piece out, that's not... Uh, there you go, that's a quarter inch. And we're gonna cut this slit. Out of the eggplant. So we now have a vertical hole in this eggplant. This is so weird. This is so wild. This is like. You don't, I don't think you're trying to clean it up. I don't think you need to. No, I'm just, no, what I'm trying to do, because I know what's happening eventually, is I'm trying to make the hole large enough. You want me to take that while you talk to them? And I'll... No. Oh, okay. Just trying to help. No, I, I get it. I'm just trying to do the same thing. Over here. Now, when it says a bottom, does it? It doesn't mean like, like just from the very bottom, not from the cuts you made. There's a reason I'm doing that too, because uh, I know what's about to happen okay. eventually. So I figure this is a good place to stop these yeah, cuts. Yeah. So if you want to go overhead for a second, ah. we can show the peeps what's happening. All right. So I got two of those. I'm gonna put a third it's one dark. in. The camera's a bit dark. I'm gonna just lighten this camera up when okay, you do that. No worries. Let's fix this camera. Oh, I, now we've got it working. I know, but what, you always get up on a ladder when I have a sharp knife in my hand and you stand over me and it makes me very nervous. So. There we go, that's a little bit better. Here, and then one is gonna go, I mean, screw it, why don't we go here? I've got a visual mathematical issue with dividing things up in proper sizes but whatever we got it it's good okay so here's what we got friends we have a bunch of cubes of um 
Eggplant. Eggplant that have been salted and are sweating. That's what we're doing. We're sweating them out a little bit. We have, you know what, I could technically gonna put those under waste there. not, want not, ah. throw these in there too. Here. We're just gonna throw those on the plate with these guys. All right, so what you've got is this weird ass Eggplant. Eggplant situation. Thank you. I know what the word is. It's like an eggplant lantern, your mother just said, and they are entirely right. It's it's we've hollowed it for the most part. We've kept the bottom on so that it can stand up. It's got some pretty uneven cuts. I kind of want to put one more small one because I'm crazy right here and right here and like that and like that. Actually, screw it. We'll just take it down. To the Perfect. There we go. All right. This guy's cool. Can we put this guy in the fridge? No. Just let him Into hang the out there. With you. Into the fridge with that guy. This guy. Compost. All right. All right. So that is um, with a little bit more involved than what I was expecting, but <coughs> there we go. That's we're set up to now actually make the thing eventually. <laughs> Are you ready to take a break away from eggplant? Oh my for god, a I'm so ready for oh, a break. Okay, well let's. Well, how about some music? Mm -hmm. Now I couldn't find us a Cthulhu band. I really tried. Did you? How but hard did you try? I tried so much. I I I, I created a ritual. I uh, sold a portion of my soul. Mm -hmm. Then I realized none left. No soul left. <laughs> I was sold oh, so much. Oh shitty! There was there was a big there was a big sale. <laughs> and but there is one of the. Great stories, uh, or one of the great locations in, in the in the uh, Cthulhuan lore is Innsmouth. Mm -hmm. um, and Innsmouth is a port town. Mm -hmm. and when I think of port town, I think of one thing only. What is that one thing? That thing is this band. Okay. It is the history of Gunpowder. Hmm.
Boom! Boom! Ah! History of gunpowder, Alex Morrison. And et al. And, and all. Oh, so, it's such a, that was such a fun day. That was such a that good day. That was such a great day. That was it such was, a good day. It was one of those days where, like, and I don't know, um, I'm a bit of a delinquent and have sort of made a career on being a bit of a delinquent. But every once in a while, when you meet up with your friends at 9.30 in the morning or what time it was, 10 o'clock in the morning, and, everyone, earlier, and everybody shows up with bottles and you start drinking in an alley before people are going to brunch on a Sunday. Yeah. It's a good life. No, it's very good. We it's went all good. day. It was intense. Cheers. Congrats. Uh, Misty Portugal made an appearance in that. Yeah. Uh, Misty Portugal Aria de la Noche, Fifi Fantome. Oh, uh, it was a good it, Directed was, by... Uh, directed by Daniel. 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 Yeah. I can, and, I, and I would take a chance at saying his last name, but it's just one of those... Oz, Oznesko? It's very Polish and very much beyond my level of pronunciation. It's in it, but he's amazing. Thank he you, Rodrigo. It. it was it like uh, I missed McLean, McLean assistant director. McLean is uh, yeah that? was there. Oh, crazy day! It was a good, good day. day. That good was a day. good day. That was a very. Are good you day. ready to play what I think may be my favorite game I've ever created? I am, but I just want to pause for one second. I hear your 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 potions boil. Oh, we're having thunder. I wasn't sure if we were having thunder or if we were having neighbors who were putting out. Their, oh, put, uh, the neighbors are putting out their uh, the garbage. Okay, yeah, cool. So we're good. Because we're good. When we have thunderstorms up here, I always worry that we're going to lose power. So that's I was just. And it has never happened, really. Yes, it has. No, no, we've lost power, but not during a thunderstorm. Oh, that's fair. So there we are. Pardon me for not paying proper <laughs> attention. <laughs> So we're going to play a brand new game that I've come up with. We've done a few things I've played on the various formats. Brand new game. Brand new game. Brand new game. New game. So new. Another way for me to make but an, ass, game. an ass of myself. Exactly. Yay. But you luckily in this game can never be wrong. Okay. It can only be does that your also, decision but wait, does that we that judge also, you on. But does that mean I can never be right? Because I don't think no, I like this game. No, you can be right. Well, I mean, I guess you could be right. If I can't be wrong, it means I, I can't be right. And I don't now think I'm having any, anxiety. <laughs> I think that's fair. I think in this, you will we'll really get to see who you are. Okay. Because we are about to play. Would you rather the Cthulhu edition? Okay. Or who do you rather? Who do you rather? Now, if you've never played who do you rather before, generally the game is played by showing a person or uh, putting two celebrities. Side against, by side? And, and you will go, who do you rather have sex with? Okay. Oh, okay. Um, who do you rather have sex with? Yes. And you have to choose the one. Okay. And, and in this case, I think we're also going to have to ask you to justify your reasoning. Okay. Is that fair? It's totally fair. I, so, But this is the Cthulhu edition. I know. I got, I got that. I, I have eyeballs. All right. So in the first uh, question, yeah. we have... Would you rather Cthulhu, and now the Cthulhu I have in this picture is actually drawn by H.P. Lovecraft, and it does look like Cthulhu is on the toilet. Kind of, but it also looks like he might be pensive. He might be pensive. With, so a thoughtful with, uh, He looks like a thoughtful fellow yeah. with a very large weapon. So part of me says, could be sensitive and kind and able to protect me, All right. or... So would you rather Cthulhu All right. or Chris Hemsworth? And this is, of course, Chris Hemsworth as Fat Thor. Now, you don't have to take Chris Hemsworth. In, this is just... No, no, of course, I, you know what? No, I playing. am going to say... This is not Chris Hemsworth. I'm going to say I'm still going to take Fat, because, you know, Yeah, okay, really, what is whatever. it? He's not. He's in a fat he's, suit. Like, he's, a, he's, a, he's a genuinely sorry, he's handsome all, man. And also, Fat shouldn't be such a dirty word. Yeah. So, yes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this version Chris of Hemsworth. Chris Hemsworth. You're going to take Chris Hemsworth? Yeah. That's fine. Yep. Yeah. Chris Hemsworth over Cthulhu. Over Cthulhu on the can slash sensitive Cthulhu. I, you know what? And I think I can understand. Okay. So let's step it up a little bit. But, like, if anyone disagrees, like, feel free to comment and tell me why. You'd yeah. be like, that was a stupid decision, El Diablo. You should have taken Cthulhu on the can. Exactly. Okay. Your next one is Dagon. Okay. Because Dagon is one of the older gods who lives deep beneath the ocean, has uh, uh, an affection to the Innsmouth, uh, uh, um, uh, an old god of the sea, shall we say. Okay, so he smells like fish, but he looks pretty strong. Exactly. Cool. Um... Or, yeah. uh, in an almost identical pose, 
if you put Jason, Jason Momoa, Momoa, I'm like, oh, come on now. <laughs> I knew right away. I was like, Jason Momoa. No, one, like, like Jason Momoa. I don't know, but I mean, in, in all fairness, Dagan is cut. He is cut. Dagan is like... But, like, I have had naughty, naughty thoughts about Jason Momoa for a long yeah, time. Yeah, but so does, like, they, does Jason Momoa have wings and whiskers? But sometimes maybe the whiskers get in the way. I don't know. Or it could Sometimes be, it the could wings be a, get in the way. Could be a bonus, though. But I'm going to go with what I know, which is definitely I've had more, like, human on, on human sex in my life. I'm going to go for Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa. So, yeah. so far... Cthulhu uh, mm. creatures zero. Yeah, but we've only, we've only done two. We've only done. We two. could. This could turn itself around. This real could quick. be very, very quickly. For instance, yeah. Would you rather? Yeah. Who do you rather? Yig, one of the ancient serpent demons, mm. who looks like a handful. My father always told me more than a handful was a waste. Of course. Speaking of more than a handful, Yig or. Donald Trump. Yig. <laughs> Yig. And I'm not just going to say because Yig's not Donald Trump. I'm going to say ancient serpent god demon thing creature. Probably. Fair. Yig. Also, better politics. That too. <laughs> also, like, the faces are very similar, but I think I like what Yig can do with well, his better. I think Yig has orange hair, which seems more reasonable. In line with what's... <laughs> <Yes. laughs> All right. That was a... Uh, uh, would you rather Hastur? Is that how you say it? Because I would have said Haster. Hastur. Hastur. Hastur, all, Hastur, also known as the King in Yellow. Okay. Or... Because in Hostor is a very regal, this gorgeous, beautiful yellow robe. Kind of looks like a dildo. Yeah, so that's good. Or the queen in gold, Regina King. Sorry, Hostor. Hostor of yeah. Regina King? I would sit on the top of Hostor in a different way than I would sit on Regina King. My mother is watching this. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry, she doesn't Mom. care. She doesn't care. She knows all of this about me anyway, I think. I say I don't go Regina King all the way. I bet Hostor has a big D. Yes, yeah, see, me too, Audrey. I'm all about it. Better, and all better better hair. Hair. I also bet that uh, Regina King has a big D. A big D? Is, uh, Listen, totally I know what, if Regina King, if you're watching, <laughs> yeah. I am so sorry. Why are you secretly watching our show? No, like, make yourself known, first of all, but like, we do different things. Exactly. I, 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 all of it's a, and again, there's no wrong answer. I know. It just really tells who you are as a person. I get it. Wrong. Next one, Wilbur Watley. Okay. Now Wilbur Watley is the brother of the. Uh, uh, what? Does he have eyeballs for hip bones? Um. Yes. Okay. He's kind of a monster in the whole groinal region. Yeah, he's got Groinal Monstry going on. Groinal, Groinal Monstry. He's, he's. Oh my god, Groinal Monstry, new band name. Groinal Monstry, fantastic. <laughs> or looking almost identical to Wilbur <laughs> okay. Watley, this picture of Orlando Blue. Orlando Blue. <laughs> Are you sure? I'm the reason why is there's a lot there's too going much, yeah, on there. Yeah, but there's there. too much to deal with in the bottom of Wilbur Watley. There's eyeballs on the hips, which would be staring at me in a weird way, and there's a lot of phalange style things hanging mm. down. And yeah, Orlando Bloom. Orlando Bloom. But again, yeah. I, Even this is not face. my favorite version of Orlando Bloom. No, me neither. It looks like he went down on it, came up with it, but like yeah. I, that's go. fine. It's still better than what's happening in Wilbur Watley. All yeah. right, this is where we get difficult. Okay. Would you like to have sex? Who would you rather? A dimensional shambler, which is a non-seeing uh, monster that travels those through dimensions are, and destroys planets and worlds, or uh -oh. Ted Bundy. Now, Ted Bundy, first of all, handsome for a serial killer. Of all the serial killers... The most handsome. One of the most handsome. But Ted Bundy also... Not teeth like that. It's true. Those teeth... But you know he would eat out. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I would still die. <laughs> yeah, but I don't it, think it might be worth going. I don't think you could survive... But could you survive Ted Bundy? I think... <laughs> 
I think it would still be a more enjoyable experience with Ted Bundy. All right. I'm picking so, Ted Bundy. I don't know. Is you that crazy? You heard it here on Sir Crazy. I'm picking My Ted wife Bundy. wants to have sex no, with Ted Bundy. No, that is not what I said. You well, cannot, it is. You cannot take that out of context. When I did it. I think people are watching the context of Between why a dimensional shambler. What I'm hoping with, is that later on, other people would lose the context. Okay, this. Ted Bundy. Look at those. My wife. Gonna do it. Mm. All right, that was an unfair one. Let's see if we can make it more fair. Would you rather have sex with Nyarla Thotep? No, what now? Nyarla Thotep. Would I have to say it? Yes. Its name out loud? You'd have to like, scream oh it. My God. No, 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 no. Or Pharma Bro himself, Martin Screlly. Oh my God! No, no, no. Thing, <laughs> thing, thing whose name I can't say. Not Martin Screlly? No. <laughs> Now, here's the first thing I thought of when I found Martin Screlly and thought about that. Uh, he's the only real person who has a name that sounds like a Cthulhu creature. Martin Screlly? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I, I'd go for the weird... Hold on, wait. I'm gonna, hold on, wait one second. There's the hair. There it is. And there's the... Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. So, versus Martin Screlly. Yeah. That's a fair... Yeah. See, I told you it was only going to be 2-0 for the very beginning. Cause... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. There is some... All right, you did very well. Thank you. You did very well. Do I Next have more? one. Oh, there's more. Okay. As a Thoth, as a Thoth, as a Thoth, which is a monster of space, the size of a planet, made of eyes and mouths. Mouths, but like mouths of teeth. If, it, if teeth. something was just made with many mouths, I fully totally that. And I first, think that might be like, a terrifying thing that you would never want to even think of having any kind of sexual relationship with. So, as a Thoth, or the Q Shaman. Quite a honky man, quite well cut. I'd still bang the Q Shaman before I bang the thing with all the eyes and the teeth. Really? Yep. Yep. I don't know. Yep, because I'd put a Canadian flag on it and do it for my country. You hear? Uh, yep. I, I, and all I'm going to say is just for, saying, for, 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 I'd for like, my own I'd like, purpose, I'd like to smother own, him with a Canadian flag. I just want to get this on because we have a camera pointed on us. Uh, if for any reason we ever have to divorce, this is at least grounds. Because... Because you would because have, have to stretch the cute I, You know what? Again, I, that other thing has super pointed teeth and a million eyes. And I'm not saying that the Q Shaman if doesn't. Q Shaman, I could give some drugs to, put a Canadian flag on top, and just like ride it for my country. Yeah. And then, I don't think and he's, then, he's never going to let you put another flag on him. Shh. He's, never. He's also never going to have sex with another woman. Um, <laughs> all right. Would you like to have sex with a deep one? I mean, duh. But does or it have to be this deep one? Oh. A deep one. Okay. One of the uh, the the followers, of course, of the, 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 the sea god we saw earlier. Okay. Or John Wayne Bobbitt, often also known as the shallow one because of what happened deep to him. Deep one. <laughs> deep one. Also, he was a gross person. Like he was just he was such a gross, a, he's a gross human being. In all fairness, the deep ones are not much better. I don't care. All right, that's it's a, a fair it's, this thing. is a one-off thing. I'm not marrying them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you you really threw it in there. That was good. All right, and finally, lastly, Yod Sathoth, the great formless entity. So it's just like a big blob that looks like boobs. But about the size of the sun. Okay. Or, okay. speaking of blobless entities, about the size oh of God. the sun. Oh, God, don't put up some Kim Jong-un. Oh. 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 <laughs> Neither is not an option. One of them is waiting in our other room. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'm going to go with Yogg. You're right! I have Yogg Sothoth. <laughs> really learned a lot about you there. Did you? Yeah. What did you learn? I learned that you would have sex with the Q Shaman, and I thought for sure nobody would ever choose the Q Shaman. Why? Because he is the Q Shaman. Oh my God, but who cares? It's better than Donald Trump. It's like it's a quick bang, and hopefully you could like you could literally suffocate him with a pillowcase or a pillow or a pillowcase because he's that dumb. See, I didn't say that my, my intentions weren't nefarious. That has been Who'd You Rather. 
The Cthulhu edition. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's the thing that happened right here <laughs> on our channel. <laughs> Who would have thought that Cthulhu would have brought out the best in me? Um, would you like to see something sexy? Um, I think yes. <laughs> you're reading that wrong, and then you realize you read it right. Yes. Uh, yes, because it's time now. Every week we like to bring a sexy woman forth. Mm -hmm. And often, as they do in the days of Cthulhu. And they bring them forth for eating purposes. Mm -hmm. Now, in their day, it was to eat them. Yes. It's for our day, it's to have the meat. Yes. So, while I push this. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Stir crazies everywhere. Thadies, gentle thems. A sexy woman eats food for one minute. Different than I expected. Was it? One more time, a sexy, With a sexy cocoon. Trust to eat you. For one minute. Yeah. That's I funny. thought that was a funny joke. It was a funny joke. I'm very funny. Anybody who doesn't laugh, you just don't understand. You're terrible Cthulhu people. comedy. I would say that's okay. What are we doing now? We are going to... I'm going to continue on with this eggplant concoction that we're making. One more time. I'm going... I've got five uh, room temperature eggs here. We're just going to um, bring, get them in a bowl. Bring it overhead. Um, here, I'm just going to... Can I... I'm just going to bring this down a little bit. Just you so can? it shows in the camera a little bit no better. No worries. There's two... Well, this can I have a paper towel, please, before yeah. you before you disappear. Yeah. Thank you very. <coughs> Thank... <coughs> well, you you're right there. <coughs> oh, COVID? Cthulhu trying to eat me. Cthulhu. Cthulhu. Um, no, that's not a funny joke. Actually, I have like I was saying last week. I have terrible allergies these days. It's really not good. I started allergies. Though. They're quite good. Actually. No, they're not great. I mean, they're doing their job. That's what happens. <coughs> But I'm not digging it at all. Also, anybody who lives in our general area, uh, meaning <laughs> I drank that too fast. I went down the wrong hole. Um, meaning around Montreal, the leaves are starting to change, friends. And on one hand, it's so beautiful. And I'm so excited about it because I think our first fall up here in the Laurentians is going to be stunning. On the other hand, I'm not happy about it. I feel like we didn't really have a summer this year because um, it was either like way too hot or way too cold. Daniel, yes. D, the divine Danny D, might I trouble you for two things? Mm -hmm. The green mixing bowl mm -hmm. and a fork, please. Uh, fork. Yeah. All right, friends, here's what we're gonna do. We're on to phase two of like three to five phases uh, for this recipe tonight. We are going to beat these five eggs. Beat them good. I'm doing it. Beat them up they owe you money. And I'm just making sure. And I got this. 
All right. So we've got some frothy. I'm going to beat them for like two more seconds, get them a little bit more frothy and lovely. And what I'm going to do, the recipe doesn't call for this, but I'm going to put a little bit of salt in here because that's how we roll. Beat them a little bit more. That's good. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Inside my little prep deck over here, I really should start tagging prep deck in the stuff that I do. We're gonna open this up. I have, that's liquid, that's liquid. This, I have in here, un petit peu of flour. So break this down so Hold on, it doesn't that's okay, up. I'm gonna close it in one second. Actually, what I'm gonna do is ask you, yeah. Um, just to read, if read, you could, oh, if you could read, step? no, if you could read the Cthulhu instructions. Yes, yes, I'm going to. The next yes, step please. of the Cthulhu instructions. Yes. Um, we could have made the dining trap a trap a trap a trap. We could have made a lot of things. This There's book is of, full of, of, of ridiculous a lot things. Of good stuff. We're just going to combine, um, the, I've got some breadcrumbs here and some flour, and because I didn't have Italian breadcrumbs, what I did was I made a little bit of Italian seasoning, which is like some oregano, some basil, a little garlic power, power rosemary. Um, I'm just gonna put a little bit of that in there as well. If you have Italian breadcrumbs, then you don't need to do that. Okay. Um, with your instructions here, we missed one that what I wanted because it requires you with religion, well, sorry, with righteous, Fury and cries of Tekalili. Tekalili! Give no quarter, but quarter and requarter the removed innards of the victim. Tekalili! I, that was us. So you place the cuboids onto a parchment, rub salt on the wounds, allow the suffering for several minutes, then pat dry the prepared pieces. So you're going to be doing that. Now, form a whisk and blend the egg. Set these aside. You've done that. I did that. Coat each of the cuboids. Hold on, we're gonna do that in one second. Where's I'm just your gonna cuboids? take my cuboids are right behind me. Grab I'm your going cuboids. To, going to grab my cuboids. Hold on, one moment, please. Those cuboids. Cuboids are being grabbed, and cuboids. as mentioned, one of my favorite video games in the '80s. Just go overhead for one second. Yes. Friends, we put some salt on this. Look at that. Oh, you can't really see it because of the light. Yeah. Here, um, let me just do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. You can see that a ton of liquid has come out of this and we're just gonna pat it dry and I'm gonna grab another dry paper towel in a second. You wanna get the liquid out of your cuboids. Your cuboids. Um, yes. All right, now, uh, coat each cuboid with the essence of the unborn fowls. <laughs> Sorry. And plunge them into the bread, plum, bread crumb flour mixture. Okay, so basically what this is telling us to do is to put our eggplant, hold on, I'm going to take this super Your wet. Cuboids. My cuboids, sorry, 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 sorry. I just want to pat this. I want to get this a little bit drier. I want to take some more, just squeeze out some of that liquid. And we are going to put our cuboids. Cuboids. Into our egg mixture. And I dump this in here, all of these guys here, or gals, guys and gals. Eggplant. Non-binary non eggplants non everywhere. Egg yeah. We're gonna get them all covered up with the essence of unborn fowl <laughs> um, here. And in, what we're doing here, friends, we have this mixture that we've made here that is I'm go over. flour um, and breadcrumbs and Italian seasoning. We're just going to stick this in a big, oh, 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 balai. I can't see the end of the bag. Oh, I can't see the end of the bag. Thanks. Um, we've got that in a big freezer bag. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to grab my um, Pull your cuboids out. implements of mass destruction or whatever. I'm going to pull, we're just going to take some of that egg oh, off. We have a, uh, do we have a, a strainer, I think here. A strainer? Oh, do you know what I have? Um, I know exactly what we have. Sure. Oh, well, thanks. 
close, but I think this is like if you want to grab some and strain them, and I'll grab some and just knock them off, and we'll see what works out. We're just gonna coat these guys and gals and cuboids. Cuboids. And cuboids. I don't want that to be my nickname. Cuboid. Cuboid. I could call you cuboid. Hey, cuboid. Cuboid. It sounds like you know you know in, in old eighties movies when they tried to force slang. Like they try to create their own slang. Oh, like not in the eighties, like when Paris Hilton is still trying to get but slipping what, to work. The worst one I always remember was in the second Bill and Ted movie. Mm. They really tried to force the concept that everybody said the word station. Mm. That's cool. And fetch. Oh, that's station. Fetch was my other, the other fetch. big one. Fetch was from Mean Girls. That's so fetch. But I think fetch actually became a thing. I think it's only because they proved in the like she was trying so hard in the movie, so maybe that's why, ironically, it became a thing. I don't know. Misty says she's not ready for fall. Yeah. Like, I am, and my feet are, like, ready for boots, and my general self is ready for, like, sweaters and... and sweater weather? Yeah, I love sweater weather. Sweater weather? I do. But, um... But yeah, I just, I don't know. The summer wasn't any, you know, shorter this year than it was any other year. But I just, I feel like we were so excited to be allowed back out into civilization and it didn't last long enough. Is basically what I'm saying. I also don't understand, mm -hmm. as it relates to this recipe, mm -hmm. why five eggs were required. I'm wondering what size Lovecraftian eggplant Pigeons? they were working with um, that this much egg was needed because um, you could probably, if you're going to try to make this, could have gotten away with two, maybe three eggs. You didn't need a full five. That's definitely for sure. Thanks. So into this bag, we have our egg wash uh, eggplant and our cuboids. cuboids. And we're just going to coat them. Here's the thing I have about with all the, the talk about fall right now. Mm -hmm. We live in a time when we really are, are trying to change the world. And the people that I look to as the faces who are going to change the world that we live in mm -hmm. all still seem to be surprised that fall happens every year. <laughs> I don't know what to do about that. Um, can we get that? Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I don't know where to put this book because I don't want to take it over. Uh, I just wanted the pan because we gotta we're gonna fry up these little guys. Fry up our cuboids. We're gonna fry up our cuboids. We got this going. I have a full cup of oil here. That's a lot of oil, but you know, whatever. Um, mm. That's a cup of virgin olive oil because that's what it called for, guys. Olive oil isn't always the best thing to fry in. It's got a different smoke point than other oils. Um, just but something. it said olive oil, eh? It did. And it might be for the flavor. It's just, it's gone. It's a more delicate oil. It's not as uh, costaud as they'd say in French. What does costaud mean? <clears throat> Hearty. Oh. Um, yeah. It's so it's funny because I make, like, I so really... They actually look like cuboids now. They, are, they do look like <laughs> cuboids, but what amazes me about the proportions in this uh, recipe, and I'm going to eventually put all of our recipes up online, these proportions are not correct, friends. What? Um, well, unless I was supposed to double batch these, as in... Yeah, there's egg a lot awesome. of... Uh, there's way too much egg. This calls for way too much egg. Maybe they're using a much bigger eggplant. But I don't know how much, like, what size Cthulhu eggplant they'd need to, like, make this Like work. an eight-foot eggplant? Is mm. that fair? Maybe a seven-foot eggplant? It might be, but... Um, I'm just going to follow up with what the instructions, the instructions here. Yes, yes, yes. Having heated the oil in a low pan, place all the pieces within and cook until brown. Thence remove them for rest upon a new parchment. I will get a new parchment. No. All right, you do that. I'm I will stand it. here. So you're, reading, you're reading the instructions. I am, but I've read them. Right, but you were... But they're read. They have been read. And I'm going to assume by parchment, in this day and age, we're talking about some paper towel. This parchment really doesn't absorb well. No. All right. Here we go, friendlies. That looks... That looks good. Let me just throw you overhead here. Mm. 
You know what? Yeah? There's like too much extra batter in here, but maybe that's that's a thing that maybe. we can deal with later. No, I'm just afraid that it's like getting in the way of my being able to like put the eggplant in here, but. There we go, that looks a little bit better. But yeah, I would definitely adjust this recipe. You don't need five eggs, and you definitely don't need as much um, breadcrumb and flour as they've called for here. I mean, you also did use the meat of another eggplant, so theoretically, you probably yeah. need a lot less. Like, but that's what I'm saying. Like, this is infinite, in, infinitely too much, and now I'm having trouble actually pulling the stuff I want out mm -hmm. of here. Um, hold on. This is, this, is, this is not ideal. Could you pass me a bowl, please? Yes. I'm just going to go in here with a slotted spoon and oh, pull you out want a, you want a, like a, a, a plate, a, anything. I just want to, I want to be able to pay attention to what's frying and get that. this, and get this out of here. I'm just going to take a slotted spoon and I'm going to take a wooden spoon and watch me go ambidextrously, folks. Um, we're just going to fry up this eggplant. Give me that stuff and I will. Uh, here, I just wanted to, no, no, I was doing this. You just want to get the actual eggplant yeah, out because there's so much extra really? stuff in there. All right. Look at us. Teamwork makes the dream work. We're frying up this these uh, cuboids. Frying our cuboids. I'm frying our cuboids. So this didn't really help much. <laughs> I just wanted to be able to pull them out because I want to be able to fry them. So yeah, I'm, just doing I'm gonna all that. I'm gonna turn doing this up a little bit. I'm gonna drink some elderflower tonic. Mm-hmm. Those look good though. For the longest time, I have made my eggplant parmesan without frying the eggplant. Frying the eggplant makes it taste infinitely better. That There's no doubt about it. But it also adds a bunch of calories that you don't need. Yes. So if you're ever making a regular eggplant parmesan, you don't have to, um, you don't have to fry your eggplant, guys. It's like definitely breaded, coated. It tastes different. It gives it a certain element of je ne sais quoi. Actually, I do know quoi. Tastiness. Um, <laughs> but you can just chop your eggplant and salt it and let it sit, but let it sit longer than I let it sit. Like I've let my eggplant sit before for like two, three hours so that you're getting all of that water out of there. And then if you want to, you can blast it in the oven for a little bit. Um, but for a really tasty eggplant parmesan, you don't necessarily need the coating. We're doing this tonight because um, when we cook the books, I make sure to follow the recipe from the book so that we can see, you know, what's what, what's going on. Um, all right, so those are cooking up. Bless you. The other thing I find interesting about this is when I do make eggplant parmesan, if I decide to coat my eggplant, I normally do it in much thicker, longer slices. So this I don't find is super even. I find that like some of it has gotten some really good batter, um, some of it less so. Um, like I don't doubt for a second it's going to be tasty because we're frying it and fried things are, are tasty. But like... This is not the way I would normally ever um, advise anyone to make an eggplant parmesan. Yeah. Because these little itty bitty bits, they're a pain in the butt. Hold on. I just want to see how cooked we are. That's hot. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'd give those probably another minute and then I'll do the next little batch. Hmm. Flavor is good. Like the flavor is good, but again, anything fried as far as I'm concerned, tastes delicious. It's pretty hard to, it's pretty hard to yeah, make Yeah, it's pretty out. hard to like not be good. How are we doing for time? Whoa. Well, you know what we're going to do? Well, I'm going to finish this. This needs one more minute at the most. Yeah. 
And then they don't need to watch me do the next bit because it's going to be more of same. Yeah. So we could always jump to something else. Well, I, the next thing to jump back. to actually needs the space that you're in. That's why. Oh, right. <laughs> so the right. whole thing is we also don't need to cook all of that. It's, mm, you're right. But from a proportion perspective, I think if we want to make this dish hey, look well, the way. We could also go along too. There's nothing stopping us. We could, we could. Along. All right. So. People don't want to stick around. That's we'll just blame it on, on, on the rain. COVID, blame it on the rain. Yeah, yeah. Remember that? No, no. Who is old enough? Who's watching the show to remember "Blame It on the Rain"? Yeah. Well, I mean, it is one of the biggest scandals, scandals. of ever. Yeah, but well, I. I'm sorry. We're talking about Missy and I were talking about it this weekend. But uh, uh, did what? you know that the guy who who was the voice, who was the actual singer? Mm hmm. That sang for Millie and Millie also was the guy who was actually the singer for Boney M because Boney M was an, also another mm -hmm. band that wasn't real. <laughs> All right, here we go. We got well, our second one you batch. Get this, there was a bunch of crumbs. Yep, start. there was. Okay. And now we've got crumbs in our oil, and that's fine because we're going to filter our fry oil when we're done with it anyway, right? Because we don't put that stuff. In the sink, you got to filter that out, and you can use that again, my friends. Don't waste your fry oil. Keep it. God invented mason jars for a reason. Um, and like, this isn't going to take very long because now the oil is hotter, and also we're good. So we we're, and now we're good. And now we're good. Yeah. The so, first time I noticed, it gets a little bit darker now. Oh yes. A little bit darker. I've been noticing because uh, with the, the kitchen, show. I drive home. I'm gonna go over here. Do Sorry. I feel like I'm no worries. Way here, off I'm just gonna filter. move here. I'll move the this padding down thing over here. I could probably be frying this at one higher. I'm just always afraid. See, I find you also when I fry on this thing, I fry on the temperature. Well, it's good that we're different people in a marriage. I know, we but the just, same it's people, one of the it things. Be, I, I'm not, I'm not be, criticizing. I didn't think you were. I'm just saying, I, I was, find, I I find that a little easier to understand what I'm, temp, what I'm cooking at, I, even though I don't find the temperatures particularly accurate. I'm doing it by um, just by how it looks. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who would have thunk, says Misty Boney M and Millie Vanilli. Yes. It was, a, it was a weird documentary I watched about that. I realized there's one guy, basically, giant producer, who was also a singer, and German guy, I believe. Who knew? Who knew? Folks. Well, you guys did. You and Misty knew. Yeah. All right. I think I'm just going to take one of these out and test it with my mouth hole and see. It's probably V hot. Thirty seconds. Thirty more seconds. Thirty more seconds. Cool. Well, while you do that, I'm gonna bring over some. You bring over your stuff. I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna bring over some ingredients, and we can make another cocktail. Together. I get the feeling that all of the people who watch us think all I do all day long is fry food. <laughs> I never used to fry stuff at home. It always made me feel too guilty and whatever. But then I also think to myself, better at home than in a restaurant. And now I have the air fryer too, which kind of helps with my fried food addiction. Fried food tastes good, friends. It does. But always make sure to dispose of your fry oil properly because you can't pour that down your drain. It will cause you serious plumbing issues. All right, turning this off. Those go. look, I'm just gonna pop overhead for one yeah, second. Yeah, those are beautiful. Um, Holy crap. Um, I'm jump for it. those are looking pretty, they're pretty good. They're golden, they're crispy. I'm gonna get them out of the oil. We're gonna go back to the main cam. And as soon as I can just get this out of the way, Dan, I will leave oh, you no, no problem, your space. You're Hold good. On. Hold on one just second. gonna move some of these things over here. See, si, senor. All right, so we have these little fried eggplant bitties. Cuboids. Cuboids. Uh -huh. Cuboids is how I want to describe more of my food. Cuboid? I want cuboid form. I could start making more cuboid form food for you if you'd like. That's something. Yeah. Like, like I think, oh, 
Is there anything that you can think of besides Jello that naturally comes cuboid? Um, aspic can be done like well, jelly, a, like stuff. Jello. I guess that is Jello. Um, and generally, you wouldn't serve aspic cuboid form. Um, the steak could be cuboid, I guess. I guess steak could be in a cuboid form. There we go. Ah, yeah. Don't touch that. It's very hot. Don't touch this. It's also very hot. And the other thing I'm just going to do is get one more. Uh, what Lovecraft would call a parchment paper. Yeah, you get but one. We're using a paper, paper towel. towel. Parchment paper towel. And I just want to take some of the oil out of here. You do that. Audrey says fried food is life. Sister, I love you. All right. You want to grab the book too while you're there? I do. We are going to do another cocktail because it's another cocktail time. And we are going to make... I'm going to take that. Just Absolutely. Oops, I'm just going to quickly just... Sure. Oh, I had a, a, a way of doing that, but okay, cool. That way you don't lose it. All right, here we are. I just want to bring this up. This is, of course, do you want to do it here? Yeah. We're making Herbert West's Deanimator. I'm just going to be right over here for a while. Uh, oh, you're not going to read this? Oh, yes, yes I will You have to it. read yes, the sorry, instructions pardon. as we go. Yes, sir. So. What is the first instruction? The first instruction for this cocktail is bind together the Santoni formula and the Saint Germain in an oh, Erlenmeyer flask. No, no, no. Stop talking to me because I don't I don't, see, I feel so stupid right now. Um, Erlenmeyer, for all I know, could be an HP Lovecraft person, but it could just be the guy who invented the Erlenmeyer flask. Erlenmeyer flask, have you seen those flasks? It's sort of like a triangle at the bottom and it comes up into like oh, a tube. Okay. That's so, an Erlenmeyer flask. So that's flask. how you know that at grade nine, I stopped doing science and all just right. went all arts. Okay, so, bind together yes, the, the Santoni's formula. Santoni's formula, which is, limoncello. Formula, which is limoncello. We're actually using a Luxardo limoncello. I find it's a little more lemony. And the Saint Germain. So we got two ounces of limoncello. And we want a half an ounce of the, oh, sorry, I've got to get two of those in. Yes, right. please. I love the Luxardo, too. It's super yellow, which is going to be key for this drink. And a half ounce. Half ounce of the Spirit of St. Germain. Spirit of St. Germain. So in this case, a half ounce of St. Germain or elderflower liqueur. We're going to bind together those. Oh, I forgot my... There it is. I'm going to quickly... Oh, I think that might be the thunder. There's the thunder. Yeah, there's the, the thunder. thunder. So we're just going to bind those together a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Go on. The next instruction is to add the slightest dash of the cerulean stabilizer, less than a quarter ounce, or you'll ruin the effect. All right. So this is what they're saying is to add a dash of... Cerulean. Uh, cerulean, which is in this case where you're doing a, uh, a blue curacao. Um, so we're going to put in for two drinks. It says less than a quarter ounce. I know. So, so we're going to put this is, there we are. So that is, the bottom on this is a quarter ounce. So we're putting for both of them. It less mm -hmm. than that. We're just doing Perfect. that. And your last ingredient is lastly, oh, dilute. Gonna... Oh, it doesn't say stir. And? It says if you overcompensate, it can have dire consequences. <laughs> uh, lastly, dilute with vodka 6100 solution. Well, they're not so they're they're using, using vodka 6100. We're, we're using, using a beautiful uh, Quebec vodka. Montreal, if I Montreal, or Schlag vodka, which is, I believe, it's not sitting here, right? It's got that funky ass bottle. Yeah, it's a very hard bottle to do this one. There we go, two ounces. Two oh. ounces per drink. And it says, you may decant doses from the flask, but a yes. large... Oh, don't give that away yet. But a large blah, blah, yes. blah, 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 is your last A little bit more of that. That's what we want. What we're using was we're using the um, the uh, the curacao to create this sort of... We want this perfect lime green, almost... Um, it's Lulu looking. Well, it, I, I call it almost radioactive green. Yes, that is fair. Can you have... grab me the ice? Yes. Please. And because I... now what we're going to do is we're going to take those and into two glasses. Now, as garnish, I have oops, chimney crickets. You did have, I but have now I have one. Syringes. Okay. So we have these. Well, they're not syringes. They're actually just a, well, they're oral syringes. Uh, oral syringes. 
And so we're gonna fill, uh, so now that we have that in there, and again, you'll notice I'm not diluting this drink. The part of this drink that's super important is the color. So if I add any ice to this, I'm gonna dilute it. So we're going to put ice in our drink and then use the ice in the, in the glass to dilute it. All right, so in that, so with that in place, we're now just gonna... Now, if you know the reanimator properly, your next bit is to pop the glass, put the drink into there, and... Oh, so are we supposed to use the oh. shot? And there we are. That is Herb West's reanimator. So now you want to take your yeah, syringe. Yeah, I was going to cheers you. Oh, well, oh take your syringe. Your take glass. your syringe. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Whoa! Woohoo! That is uh, woo. That's a little bit of something. Then. Well, it's really good. It's actually really delicious. Really good. It's, it's mm. it verges on. I think with the it's the it's the lemon with the, the the elderflower. It almost verges on melon without being the bad part of melon. It's not melon, but it does remind me of something from my childhood that was non-alcoholic. I don't yeah. know what it is. There's Your a flavor. Reminds me of. Anything that was lime flavored, like a lime. Yeah, flavor. but like back in the day before yes. before lime got too like intense. Lime, yes, yes. Lime lifesavers. Or li yes, oh lime my god, life it's lime lifesavers. So if you're old like us and you remember what lime lifesavers tasted like, and I think there's something that about a cocktail that has to be served in a syringe because I can do this. Giddy up. <laughs> yes. Halloween party fun. There we are. Herb oh. West reanimator. I'm going to hold on to that. It also means if you haven't seen fast. the reanimator, see the reanimator. Awesome I drink fun. that too That's fast. A good, oh, I forgot garnish. It's okay. How do you garnish inside a syringe? Well, you were supposed to... Wait, was I supposed to garnish the other one? Maybe yeah. Was to garnish the other one. No, you were know. supposed to garnish the other one with rosemary, but we yeah. couldn't find it. All right. I bought that for it, so never mind. Okay, also, my new favorite thing... Um, <laughs> This was two bucks at the pharmacy. Get a few for your house. Those are awesome. This is, cocktails? A, this is a good. This is a good party trick, friends. For cocktails, this yeah. is fantastic. All right, we got more to do on this ridiculous recipe. I love this recipe. I love it too. I'm just, it I'm just hoping it tastes as good as like I want it to. I think this also would be really nice over right, crushed ice. Yes. Or uh, or diluted with soda water. It almost would be like yes, a, because it would be like a fountain shop mm, lime soda. It I would think. be a uh, lime crush or green crush yes. or green yep. Fanta. Yep, but it's not the same sweetness of the green Fanta that those of us from a certain yeah. generation know. All right, I had it. Where's my wooden spoon? Let's see what's going on out here? How are the friends? How are they doing? Let me just take a quick check on the people here. You take a check on the people, and I'm just gonna extricate for one second to make sure. What I do we know have I'm, here? What I'm doing next here. Uh, it is a, a, such a cool Halloween drink idea. Thank you, Audrey Ivory. And Audrey Ivory also up? says fried food is life. It is true. But Misty says that Audrey yeep, yeep. It's also like you're drinking a shot as a drink. No, it's actually like drinking multiple shots it is a as drink. a drink. Which yep. is nice. Which yep. is very nice. So, Into this pot. We have that going back over you, no, here. No, you guys keep talking. I'm just putting some cheese in here. I got some cheddar. I got some mozzarella. Um, so funny, because some of you know me to be such a cheese snob, and that's true, I am a cheese snob. Um, but sometimes when I'm doing sauces like this, I don't get as snobby about my cheese. Like, I don't. It's it's We're blending cheese to make a sauce. What we're trying to do here oh, is, is melt these guys a little bit. And over here, I have some milk. Can we throw an Halloween place in our place? Yeah, Party we, at our place? Yeah. Of course we can. Maybe I'll skip, well, maybe my, we'll, maybe I'll skip my birthday and do a birthday Halloween party. Or maybe what we can do is do a live Halloween party show 
and then have the Halloween party. We'll have some people here that we can bring on. And yeah, I mean, if y'all want to, yeah, we could talk about Halloween. I mean, it's only two weeks after if Thanksgiving. If you're interested, let us know. So, so part of me says, do you want Halloween or do you want Thanksgiving? Oh, why is this not? <laughs> this, is, this is stopped. Yeah. Quickly. That has stopped. All right, so what I'm doing here is I've got shredded cheese in a pot, and I'm just heating it up a little bit. Again, I, I'm going, oh, that was loud. I'm going entirely based on the recipe from this book. Normally, if I was doing a cheese sauce, I would have started with a roux. I would have done some milk or cream and some flour and whatever. This recipe just said put your cheese in the pot and melt it, which, like, I'm not 100% convinced that this is a good idea. But... We're cooking the books, which means I need to follow the recipe from the book as as it says. As it says, could you tell me um, in in the book? In, let me get back to the book. In the um, or, original vernacular. Yeah. Um, Not the original vernacular again. Audrey's Over. birthday, my birthday, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Why don't you just move in? Yeah, exactly. I'm like at this point, we'll build you a tiny home in the backyard and. Um, <laughs> It's all good. Because may have a problem with that. No, she won't. Uh, she in a small a pan, <laughs> place the cheeses and melt on low heat, then stir in the milk and cream. Sparing a limb, whisk patiently until smooth, then whisper the words and add the powders. After what are the words? Do you know the words? I'm, I, no, I don't, but I'm getting you know my... the words? The words are this. What are the, are the words? Are there? Tickalini. Dip. Dip. Ladle. Ladle. Take a lily. Take a lily. Dip ladle. I don't know, guys. I'm right now what seems to be forming in this pan is like one large piece of shredded cheese. Yeah, but once it you kind of it kind of reminds me a little bit of like queso fundido what is ha happening here right now, which is once you add the milk, it'll start to spin out. Yeah, I'm just I'm doing this over low because that's what Cthulhu told me to do. Um, you don't want to fuck with Cthulhu. You don't, apparently. I've learned a lot in the last couple of days. Because then he won't call. Because everybody loves a call of Cthulhu. Uh -huh. I even understood that joke. Did you? I did. Cool. All right. So they're melting. I wish we could go overhead, but we're not doing that right now. Um, oh, yes, we can. I fix it. Oh. oh. <laughs> You're in the wrong place. Oh, Hang hold on. on. One second. No. Oh. Oh. No, no, it's not you. No. Nope. Oh. oh, I see what I did. So, oh, okay. Hang on. All right. You can kind of see it, though. You see that things are, <laughs> things are melting here. All right. I can fix this. I can fix this. This is an easy fix. Audrey Avery, I want to know. Uh, you were, Audrey Avery, I want to know if you were happy with your Rosh Hashanah meal. Misty Portugal, were you happy with your Rosh Hashanah meal? Okay, friends, this is finally melted into something that I want to add liquid to. We're getting there. Oh, yeah. Here we go. All right. I've got some milk. I have some cream. All right. Yeah. Yay! I look love at that. Look at that. So we've got milk and cream, and we're going to whisk this so that it makes a sauce. Oh, I'm so happy that people like our food from the kitchen this week. Oh, we lost the color of night, or the color of the space. All right, so we're just whisking this together. I'm actually going to add some onion powder. Oh, I've decided <laughs> to become one with the thing. Some onion powder. Who knows that you're trying to worship Cthulhu? Some garlic powder. And as much as the recipe didn't call for this, I'm adding one pinch of the Italian seasoning that I had been working with before. And we're going to whisk this up till we get a cheese sauce. She has a sauce. Can you do me one favor, yeah. Daniel? On that back burner, yeah. there is a thing of marinara. Can you taste it to see if it's warm? Oh, yes, yeah, bubbling. Okay, can you give it a stir, please? Do you want to make that one? Thank you. Oh, boy. We are we are getting to, to the end of our show, and I'm 
We're just, we're getting here, folks. We're almost cheesy. We're almost cheesy. It ain't easy being cheesy. It's what Chester told me my whole life. Uh, I'm also getting too excited because I can see the clock, so I just need to... Don't worry about it. I need to chill my panties and just quietly whisk... Trust me, if you, we may go a little bit long, but you'll want to see what this looks like. This is a, a I'm dying insanely to see what this looks like. spectacularly weird uh, 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 dinner option. <laughs> it's crazy. The visual of it. Let's put it this way. At some point, we have an insane fruit that still has to be involved. Yeah, we still haven't shown you what's... what's, what's Shall I ask question number two? While sure, yes, that? please. I'm going to ask question number two while we're doing that. Uh, question number two this week, everybody. This is a fantastic question. Um, just making it switch over there. Uh, because, and I have to say this. Uh, if you know much about Cthulhu and the Cthulhu, uh, the, the Lovecraftian horror, it never goes well for its protagonists. Okay. Uh, there are generally two outcomes of how you deal with learning that you will become part of the Cthulhu mythos. Okay. So the question is one very, very simple. If this is all true, is it better to be destroyed or driven mad by fear? Oh, destroyed. You think it's better? Why? Because the, I, again, and I'm, I'm basing so much of, of this on the one Cthulhu movie I watched this week. Watching Nicolas Cage, by the way, if you haven't seen Color Out of Space, Color Out of Space, you should see it. If you like disturbing shit that's going to make you nauseous and terrified and give you anxiety, um, watching him descend into madness was like it was hard. It was it was rough. And part of me says, no, I'd rather just have some weird entity destroy me mm -hmm. than be driven mad over an extended period of time. To the detriment of those around me, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. See, and I'm the exact opposite reason. I want more same, cheese in this. I'm exact opposite opinion for the same reasons. Okay. Uh, hang on. I just want to. Mm. Had to have a drink. Um, the I think it's I think it's better to be driven mad because a I think there is there is. Um, yeah, there's a definite unsure nature about what happens when you die. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. But there's also no way to ever know. Okay. There's so many aspects of what of we madness. consider madness <laughs> for very that's, they know that's fair. that we understood as we... And I, and I think that there's something about the idea, especially the concept of... Being driven mad by fear, which is very, very predominant in a lot of Cthulhu mythos. Driven mad by fear, and I think there's something in that just almost is kind of weirdly appealing. That that's how you'd like to go? Yeah, if you had to. To, like, lose your mind being terrified? Yeah. Really? A little bit, a little bit. I don't think that would be fun at all. Friends, know. For the, I'm, breaking, I'm breaking with what I have said the entire show. I and used exactly the proportions of cheese they told me to. It but wasn't good enough. Being a cheese human being. It wasn't thickening. It wasn't. It was too liquid for what I know we're about to do with this. And I'm like, these proportions are all off. Makes me think I could write a cookbook. <laughs> yeah. Nobody has given an answer to this one. Do you, would you is rather? Anybody, hello. Oh, got, is there we got, we got, we got I'm just kidding. There. Uh, would you rather be driven mad by fear? Or would you rather be destroyed by a monstrous thing? If you had that, like, if that was the present, the monstrous thing, Cthulhu appears, would you rather Cthulhu kill you? Yeah. Or would you rather the appearance of Cthulhu render you mad? Mad, and then I get to, like, live with that? I don't know. Yes, that I, think doesn't... I think there's something fascinating. There's a, there, 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 there is a certain wisdom in madness. No, this needs more cheese. I'm sorry. This had Who said too, that? This had too much egg and too much breadcrumb and definitely just, I'm just calling it by El Diablo standards, there's something in here that is just... While you do that, I'll, I'll mix while you do that. Oh, thank you. 
and and we'll go to the. Go. So I'm, I saw that there's comments there. I'm Misty coming. Misty Portugal would rather. No, 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 no! I've got a whole thing to oh, do okay, this. So sorry, stop sorry. reading things. Sorry. You're ruining the internet. I didn't mean to ruin You're, the internet. I'm not. Now you don't understand why I'd rather be driven mad. All right. I'm gonna call it on this much cheese. That's good. It's um, good. No. And, and because I can bring it up a bit, let it let it because boil we're whiskey, a bit. So it, I'm going to throw these bits off. in here too. Because also, so what the people have to say over here? Uh, what do we got over here? Let me see. Uh, Misty Portugal said that I'd rather be destroyed. I think because we'll like because like Will Wood. You know, Is even wood? you're you even know you're mad, so I guess it depends on life. Like if I'm super oil old, then just dis destroy me. Oh, you see, that's where I, I, I entirely disagree with Misty. If you're super old, you just want to lose. Oh your yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm super old, and I can be a burden. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, that sounds so much like you. That sounds like just right up your alley. Well, I wouldn't be a burden to people that I like. I would be a burden to the Cthulhu. Oh, so you... Uh, I'm... Well, I think if you drove me mad, I'd just follow him around a lot. And just go, where are we going? All right. I'm ready. I'm just going to move this. We're going to... That's my take on it. We are going to plate this beast. All right. We're going to place... Plate this monster. This is good. This, I'm so excited. We're we're, I, we're we're a little we're a little over, but it's 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 so worth this. Okay, so oh, let me get the, earlier uh, today. You made this. You want this? I want that. But earlier today, I also made some marinara. If you guys are fans of the show, you know how to make this already. We've 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 put our marinara recipe up a few times. So I'm just going to no. Whoop. Oh, sorry. The recipe says I'm supposed to use a jar of marinara, so I'm going to assume that's about 14 ounces of marinara. Um, but again, this is where I'm taking liberties tonight. You can't talk towards there to the camera. Anymore. This is where I'm taking liberties tonight. <laughs> I'm going to use... He just did it again. I'm going to use... <laughs> this much... You just did it again. <laughs> this much marinara. There we are. So we've got our marinara. This? Oh no. Yes. Please put that. So now that's what we're... plate that in the middle of our All right. sea of madness. We're gonna take these little guys. Cuboids. Our cuboids. We're gonna I'll pour... get us forks, by the way. We'll need your forks for We're gonna put our cuboids around this crazy. I was sure to go overhead so people can see this. Power concoction. This is what it looks like overhead. This, this is, is crazy. This is. I'm just gonna. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> These are tasty. All right, friends. There we are. Are you ready? Because here's where the absolute insanity of this recipe comes in. I want to get this out of the way to make sure it's not blocking. Here we go. Into this. Standing tower of eggplant, we pour our cheese sauce and allow it, oh, I needed a bigger platter. And we allow it to explode in some kind of weird, yeah, put it that way. It's not pouring out the other sides, but yes, you you see the idea. This is this it like leaks from it oozes from one side. Um, <laughs> didn't quite work out the way I wanted. Finish to it though. Finish it. You have oh, done. Oh, sorry, I have not finished it. This is where it gets amazing. Where's the big knife? I think it's uh, in the, the sink. Big knife is right here. Now, what do you have? First of all, show them what you have. Show them the. I got this guy. It's supposed to have a star fruit, but it's star fruits aren't. Star fruit right? is what you really need. This is a uh, cosmic. There we are. So there we go. This is our weird Uzi Can you go overhead. Can we go overhead. They're going overhead. This is it. Look. It's our weird Cthulhu 
eggplant, eggplant monster cheese parm scenario. This is this looks like a butthole, which is fantastic. So yeah, I think I know exactly what I did wrong already in terms of how I cut my slits in this eggplant, but I'm excited. Can I have a fork? Oh yeah, yeah. We'll I'm try excited this. Let's to try like this. let's eat this to thing. like grab these little crunchy bits with the tomato sauce and the cheese sauce. Mmm. Yep. Yep. That's mm -hmm. really good. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm not mad at it. No, I mean, no, it I didn't, don't mind it that didn't at all. work the way I wanted it to, but my God, it's not bad at all. I also kind of get the impression from looking at this cookbook that Buddy, who wrote it, never actually tried any of his recipes. Like yeah. it was just the ingredient proportions were all off. I know for the cocktails they worked. Um, before I, I find they're still very strong cocktails. They're big cocktails. They are big cocktails, but I think that before I recommend this book as an actual cookbook to anyone, the novelty factor is phenomenal. Um, but I think if I was going to recommend this cookbook to anybody else, yeah, I'd love a drink. Thanks. Uh, mm. Are you sure for me? But before I recommend it, I'm going to try to cook some other stuff because the proportions were all wrong. So like, the cookbook, you're not you're not confident <clears> on. <throat> I'll take responsibility for what I fucked up tonight, which is that my Your slits were off. My sli my slits were off, um, so that when I poured the cheese sauce in, it didn't equally distribute on the plate, which is what it was supposed to do. I was supposed to pour it down the middle, and like cheese should have come out from like yeah. four different bits, and like ooh monsters. But the flavor of it is really good. Is actually really good. So half of that is devoted to the fact that your marinara. It's a beautiful, perfect marinara, full of flavor. Oh, thank you. Now, what? if you like this series, um, uh, the cooking the books, let us know in the comments. You know, let us know so that we can bring it back more. Mm -hmm. We like doing this series. But if there's a cookbook that you love, that yeah. you're like, oh, I want to see these idiots Do cook that. something from there, cook, like, send us a message. It was one of my favorite cookbooks. I, the first book, cookbook I ever owned as a child. Which I know this, but I think the lip smacking, joke cracking cookbook for kids. I wish you still had that. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna find. find I'm gonna, gonna find that. Yeah. Great um, cookbook. Um, mm, mm -hmm. It's really good. It's actually quite delicious, it's and delicious, both of these cocktails are quite good. It's just the proportion. So, like, if you're not a cook or a bartender. I would say that maybe this isn't the best book because like you're definitely going to have to make adjustments because the proportions are weird, man. Yeah. Uh, unless they're making eggplants this big, but that's fine. Yep. This is really good. Yep. Make this thing. It's a great Halloween uh, thingy. That has been the show. Next week yes. is our second Asian sensation show. It is. We're going back to Asia to cook some amazing Asian food and have some Asian cocktails. Asian inspired cocktails would be yeah. really good. Yeah. Uh, one of the things we love cooking Asian food around here, you make some amazing Thai food, some Thank amazing Chinese. We, oh, so good. So I'm very excited that that part, that, that, that regular series is back. Yeah, look at us. So much regular series. You, you need some regularity in your life? Tune in to Stir Crazy. Yeah. Um, oh. Have a friend that's not regular? Tell them to subscribe. <laughs> Okay. My mother said, I wonder if holes punched in it would look cool because it would yeah. look like barfing. Yeah, it probably, really yeah, good. that would be really, really good. I think, that, I think if the, but maybe, also, I, maybe if the, could I do that with a cherry pitter? I'm wondering. If cherry, no, but I, I also think that um, the, if the cheese sauce was a little thick, so but it would have hold up. It would that's why I kept adding cheese to it because I knew that. The, and I think their, their version of cheese sauce wasn't good. I think it needed to be a proper bechamel y. Mm -hmm. If you had done a regular cheese sauce, your problems would have been fixed. But we committed to mostly cooking out of the book. Yeah. With the exception of adding a little bit more. And I did add more cheese. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I was looking for like a, a pullier cheese sauce. Yeah. But So that's it. Uh, yeah. Next week we go Asian Sensations. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we want to thank Cthulhu. Thank you, Cthulhu. You want to thank Mike, Mike Slater? Thank you, Mike one Slater. One more time. Check your recipe proportions, dude. Yeah, one more time. The book is the Necronomicon. Nom 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 nom. nom, nom, nom. Uh, recipes and rights from the lore of H.P. Lovecraft by Mike Slater. Uh, you can get that on Amazon. That's what we got. There's the book right there. 
It's fun just for the description. It's fun. Honestly. It's so much fun. Uh, thank you very much. Um, we also want to thank uh, the History Gunpowder. History Gunpowder. Yes. Okay. And Cthulhu for being our sexiest uh, woman ever. Cthulhu, you're so sexy. Uh, I'm El Diablo. I'm the Divine Danny D. We love you very much. Check for what's going to happen next. Check it out. We'll Bye. see you next week. <laughs>